Down 0-1 in the third, fourth place match. Cats has got to catch up, as is standard whenever you're down. The map choice is his, however, which will be of benefit given that it is going to be Daybreak, a map where a lot of Cats antics are a lot more possible. Up in the top right-hand corner, captain of Team Root is Cats. And down in the bottom left-hand corner, the captain of Team Grubby, it is Grubby. The reason I say that um, Daybreak is a lot better suited for Katz's antics is all about this front section right here. A lot of 7-pool, Roach Rush, weird Baneling plays, even things like what we see Ghostly User do sometimes, planting the hatchery right here and cheesing the front with spines. Very, very easy, very possible, no ramp at the front. Also, given that on this map it's long distances, it's very easy for Katz to do his triple hatchery before pool. However, all that is moot as we see Grubby going for Pylon in base. Now, if he's doing his parting impersonation, he's going to be a total jerk and go Immortal Sentry anyways. But, given that this is Heart of the Swarm, and because I'm hungry, I will call it Heart of the Shwarma, Grubby could very well be going for a gateway first play, given those queued up probes. Oh! Tricked me! Gateway getting thrown down for Grubby right now. In Heart of the Swarm, uh, because this Nexus can produce a Mothership Core, you get that surge of three units when uh, you used to only have two. Zealot Stalker plus Mothership Core pushes a real pain in the butt. But it looks like Katz is doing really the one thing that crushes a, a one-basing Protoss, which is going to be the fast hatch at expansion. Most Protoss, or most Zergs are saying, yeah, you know what, you shouldn't go for hatch first, because if you go for hatch first, then you can get cannon rushed. But that's only if your opponent is early expanding. In this spot, Cat's just trying to monitor around, wants to get a read on if that Zealot gets constructed early, because right now, look at this Cat's going for gas, then pool. He wants to get that speed for Zergling upgrade up right away. With the two in each geyser, it's looking a lot like Mothership Core Warp Gate. First Zealot is... Not, uh, Mothership Core is... No, uh, maybe Stalker Mothership Core? I mean, Mothership Core Warp Gate would not be a bad play in this spot. There's the Warp Gate, there's the Stalker, so huh. And now a Mothership? Yes! Day 9, the commentator. Always right, eventually. Uh, for timing comparison, we're at 4 minute down at this expansion. If it was standard play out of cats, he would be taking his third base at 4.15. So you can see that this Mothership core is out and ready to assault exactly that as fast as possible. AFAP up in the top side, we see that cats is going for very fast Zergling speed, does have double queen production on route, so things are looking very good for Katz despite this new cool suave build out of Grubby. Katz is trying to keep a close eye. Is there an expand going down? Trying to keep a close eye. Is Mothership Core shooting across? Yes, indeed it is. A couple Zerglings getting produced, and normally the Protoss says, oh, you went hatch first, I don't really need to worry about Zergling speed. In fact, rarely do Zergs, uh-oh. All right, let's look at those 10 seconds again. Rarely do Zergs get Zergling speed that early. But what's very, very nice about uh, this response that Katz did is that he's going to just spend a little bit of time defending with some basic units with the Queen. And then he's going to be able to do a counter swing with this Zergling speed. Grubby now getting up his hatch. <laughs> because apparently he's Zerg in my commentary now. Zergling surrounding the Stalker. Will they be able to pick it off? They don't have speed quite yet. Nice micro job by both players, but that Mothership Core really doesn't kill Zerglings very fast. It doesn't kill anything very fast. It kills everything actually at the exact same rate because it is not a variable damage unit, but the Zergling speed is getting increasingly close to done. And this is going to be a real problem for Cats. Having that Orphan Queen, he's going to end up losing it unless he can get a lot of Zerglings out very, very fast. There, the Zerglings actually retreat. 
And Grubby's starting to realize, uh-oh, I don't have enough defense at the front. Just two sentries. Warpgate research is done. He's going to wait for that next sentry to pop out. Now we're starting to see the Zergling stepping on up. There's the gate, or there's the force field getting thrown down, and... Katz has to pull back, but only for a temporary period of time. He's going to pick off this one Stalker. Back home, Layer coming up at 7 minutes. A standard timing for Layer along with a third base, which is exactly what we see. So Katz is playing this off quite well. Grubby clearly has one of these Heart of the Swarm ultra plan builds out. But this is another deviation I'm not very familiar with, a 5-gate follow-up. In my eyes, what's going to be happening now is Grubby says, Alright, I got my Mothership Core up so early, I don't need it for defense. I already have up all these sentries for defense. But I don't want to just build sentries for defense, I want to build sentries for offense and for posterity. So what we're going to see Grubby do is do a 5-gate push, and following it up, he'll just recall back home because he has his extra energy. If there was an all-in plan from Katz, this energy would go into that Nexus... Uh, photon overcharge. Grubby, does he have any forward pylons? No, he's going to get the scout up. There's the or Oh, a hallucinated oracle. He's hoping he passes over some units. Can hallucinated oracles do fake pressure? Can they, like, fake the charge up? Well, right now, Grubby's trying to go over all the key points where the Overlords are to trick his opponent into getting some sort of anti-air. But so far, uh, Katz has not really seen anything. So Grubby's going to shoot in. Katz is going to pull back. Wow! Really fast recognition there. But that is a hallucination. Here comes the Zealot Sentry push, one of my favorite moves from Wings of Liberty until people found out it was bad. Burrow, Infestation Pit, en route. Is there going to be enough? Six Zerglings out. Really? Six Zerglings, ten more Zerglings in production. This is going to be quite a potent push coming up from Grubby. He's only just now started his Stargate. No Forge, no Twilight Council, no Robo, no tech at all. It's just Blast the Front Mode. See you later, Queen. Hope you enjoyed the cameo appearance. Hatch fallen very rapidly. Now Katz is going to try to pull this counterattack move. And it looks like Grubby's not ready to give up on the push yet. Wants to continue shoving. Swarm hosts rapidly close to completing. Very odd looking timing push coming out of Grubby. And yet it's striking at such a vulnerable time. And there the swarm hosts arrive. There's no detection. This is going to be the real problem right now for Grubby. He has absolutely no way to detect. He's going to try to recall his units out of there. No, he's going to try to stay. He's going to lose the Mothership Core. He does cast Recall right before the Mothership Core goes down. And now it's going to have to be Oracle Production. Cats with all these swarm hosts is going to begin just burrowing right outside the front. And the Oracles are going to be the perfect key to taking them all out. Or snickety pesky pylon at the front. Hydralisk, Swarm Host, very tough defense for a player who has gateway units and oracles. White Ra has lost to this many, many times on his stream. Very cautious planting of the Locust. Will there be any uh, force fields? No. There does need to, though, be some sort of transition from cats into... Um, support, speed for Hydralisks, Nidus network for mobility for those Locusts. No Enduring Locust upgrade is down yet, Burrowed Ling being a pain in the ass. Oracle's really not what you want to be spending your, <laughs> really, really not what you want to be spending your Envision on. But I think you may very well have to do it. Does, are there any Observers out? Well, there's one. Much like the standard North American average Protoss player, build exactly one Observer, and then only build Colossus. Who builds two Observers? Who does that? 
Paradoxically, Cat's not actually that far behind in this position, even though he's behind supply-wise, because Protoss has not even started a single upgrade. Protoss getting Colossus out has not started any upgrades for that. Sure, these oracles are being kind of annoying, picking off a good amount of drones. 14 total killed off, and yeah, the units lost have. It's a little bit favoring Grubby. I mean, ooh, I don't like drop, but we'll come back to that. Other than drop, Katz is looking like a very strong mid-game proto or mid-game Zerg. Can easily do a push around 1530 to 16 minutes using speed hydralis. Speed and upgrade that he's neglected to research a number of times. A little bit of a vulnerable spot for Katz as he gets the rest of those researches out, rounds out that composition. Colossus being built two at a time. A smart play from Grubby. He identified, okay, look, I killed off your third base. You're not going to be going for mass roaches and mass zerglings. You're going to have some roaches and some zerglings, but you might have those power units... Swarm hosts, hydralisks, infestors, maybe, just maybe, you get some air units up. So, I'm going to be poking with the oracle to get a good sense if you have those air units or not. And in the meantime, I'm just going to be building Colossus two at a time. I mean, this is a weird looking force from Grubby, but an intuitive one. Just skewing hard to the Colossus. They'll deal with the small number of ground units. So right now, we've just passed the 16 minute mark in the game, the 1 a.m. mark as of the recording of this, because I am a dedicated nerd, the beta servers go down tomorrow morning, and I refuse to quit until these games are casted. Locust stepping in, a lot of force fields, hardly any DPS from gateway units, but there are the Colossus in conjunction with the force fields, giving cats hell, he's trying to get into position. He does have the range upgrade, but I mean, there's five Colossus here. It might be only Colossus that gives Grubby the win right now. I mean, the efficiency of those Colossus is, is astounding. And there's no Enduring Locust upgrade. Oh no, hasn't been researched, so the Locusts that do pop out hardly do any damage. Swarm hosts evaporate as well. And Grubby's taking the opportunity to expand. He's not even really building any additional gateway units. There's the roaches streaming on in that would imply, hey, do you have any gateway units to protect these colossi? And of course, this one colossus says, why would I need protection? I'm the Jack Bauer colossus. Grubby just massing the colossus. Even has one chilling back at home. And Katz is really in rally ho mode. Trying to send whatever pops out of these hatcheries straight into the meat grinder. And I mean, Grubby's just efficiency is astounding here. 1100 versus 4000 in the units lost tab. Katz is doing his best to hang in there. Ah, oh, The Mothership core upgrading itself into the Mothership. I highly doubt Grubby will engage until that is completed and this is the perfect move. Only thing that cats can really do right now is flood roaches because at any second that push could dart right up the ramp. So what is Grubby going to do? He's going to get Cloak. Going to just get a few more Colossus. Eight sounds nice. It smells like a PvP today. And immediately Cats sees it and realizes, oh god, I got to get more Overseers. The mothership, we haven't really seen it appear very much in the in the beta environment. Mostly it's the mothership core. Gateways galore, units and more. Poor Zerg. Zerg, comma, poor. Grubby continuing to expand, and he's not even messing around at his expansions, not even building them naked, just getting a lot of cannons, max defense. A single Overlord Grubby spots it, mercilessly takes it down. Katz has zero vision of the map. 
Grubby has everything Grubby. 1A for victory. Still has the time warp, still has the mass recall. Everything getting unloaded on top of those units, but the Colossus count just too high. Oh my god, I have not seen such a disparity in ages in that units lost to have. And Grubby successfully brings himself to 2-0 and zero in the 3rd, 4th place match, which means, interestingly... In game number three, we are already at match point. Grubby could close it out in this next series. Let's see if he does or if Cats has a comeback in him.